Did you know that Iroh set up a damn tea shop when he arrived in the spirit world? That man can't stop spreading the sweet love of tea, can he? I'm gonna say it, Iroh is the best character in all of Avatar. Do not tell me little soldier boy doesn't bring a tear to your eyes. Uncle Iroh has been one of the most spiritual characters in Avatar since the beginning. So if anyone was to get into the spirit world once they passed on, it would be him. But how? There are only two other characters who have been able to transcend the same way Iroh does, so how did he do it? And what did he get up to in between him passing on and then meeting Korra in the spirit world? Well, that's why you're here, isn't it? Let's dive into Uncle Iroh's life in the spirit world, because we could all use some more of Uncle Iroh. First, we gotta clarify how someone transcends to the spirit world. Despite what you may think, the spirit world isn't the afterlife. The spirit world is more like a parallel plane of existence that exists alongside the physical plane in the world of Avatar. People don't automatically go to the spirit world whenever someone dies. The spirit world is more like another dimension of souls and fantasy-like creatures that can cross over into the real world. So whenever a character possesses strong spiritual energy or has had a powerful connection to the spirit world, throughout their lives, they can choose to transcend to the spirit world instead of passing on. Iroh happens to be one of these people who were very spiritual and chose to move on to the spirit world. After the death of his son Lu Ten, Iroh was traumatized and withdrew into himself, completely losing any desire for power he previously had. He went on a journey throughout the world at this point, General Zhao even mentioning his rumored journey to the spirit world. It was said that he went there in search of a son but to no avail. Despite this, Iroh's worldviews changed drastically from a man who desired power wishing to honor his father and grandfather's commitment to the war to a man who wanted to appreciate life and the more important aspects of it, like his relationship with his nephew Zuko. It's not just these rumors which are evidence of his great spiritual connection, however. During episode 7 for season 1, Iroh can see Aang and Roku's dragon Fang fly above him in spirit form, something which is impossible for someone who doesn't have the same connection as Iroh, just as we see with the guards who took him prisoner. So we've established that Iroh isn't just a tea enthusiast, so what led him to transcending to the spiritual world? On the lead up to his death at at least over 80 years old, Iroh ran his tea shop, the Jasmine Dragon, and assisted Zuko whenever he could, becoming an interim Fire Lord while Zuko was away, and acting as a distraction while Zuko got his reunited mother and her family to safety. Iroh was able to see the birth of his great niece Izumi, and also became familiar with Aang and Katara's children, Bumi, Kaya, and Tenzin. Sometime after 131 AG, Iroh chose to ascend to the spirit world, feeling that he had done all he could in the material world. He is assumed to have died of old age, leaving his mortal body behind. He let his soul make a new home in the spirit world, and even constructed a new tea shop. It was here that Iroh became good friends with many spirits in the spirit world. He spent his time exploring the spirit world and even holding celebrations for the spirits. He happened to find the original teapot that Wan used to hold the spirit of light Rava before they fused, and even held a tea party and wedding celebration for the two-headed frog spirit Mei Jim. Iroh seems to have spent a lot of time living a peaceful life in the spirit world. We only discover the major details as to what happened to Iroh when he happens across a child version of Avatar Korra lost in the dark forest nearby his tea shop. He immediately recognizes Korra from having known the previous Avatar Aang. It's here he leads Korra to safety and invites her to join a tea party. He helps calm her down regarding her search for the lost Jinora and informs her about the intricacies of the spirit world, including how her emotions can affect the environment and other spirits' mood. He assists Korra in finding a nest for a lost baby dragonbird spirit, giving her sage advice about life and her approach to it. We only see see Iroh in two further encounters when he meets Aang's children and meets Korra again. While Tenzin and his siblings are trying to find his lost daughter Jinora, Iroh comes across them in the dark forest, having been informed of their presence in the spirit world by a knowledge seeker, a small spirit in service to the knowledge spirit Wan Shi Tong, he who knows 10,000 things. The siblings recognize Iroh immediately, cementing that he was alive when Tenzin, Aang and Katara's youngest child, was old enough to remember. Iroh 
mentions that it has been almost 40 years since they last saw each other. He offers to guide the group out of the forest, but they refuse to leave the forest until they find Jinora. Iroh then provides some cryptic advice to the trio, saying that if they travel too deep into the spirit world, they will find themselves in a place where only the lost will find them. That place he's talking about is the Fog of Lost Souls, a place where Admiral Zhao was imprisoned for his efforts to kill the moon and ocean spirits. In the fog, one can succumb to madness and be left forever wandering, facing their own darkest memories. The last time we see Iroh was when he comforts Korra at the Jaibao Grove. He was originally looking for a new teapot, but found her instead. He stated it was common in the spirit world to find something or someone they did not know they were looking for. He helped Korra realize that just because she was the Avatar didn't mean she needed to have an answer for everything. He prompts Korra to go talk with Zuko while mentioning their turbulent relationship over the years that resulted in them becoming lifelong friends. Once Korra leaves, we unfortunately never see this amazing character in the series again. It seems like Iroh is definitely well-traveled in the spirit world, having been there long enough to have gained substantial knowledge about the natures of this plane of existence and the various locations that are present there. So one question arises, why is it that Iroh has never traveled from the spirit world to the physical plane? When Korra goes back to talk to Zuko upon Iroh's advice, we see Zuko surprised to hear that she talked to him in the spirit world. This revelation is both elating for Zuko, but also kind of heartbreaking for us as the viewers. Iroh treated Zuko like his adopted son, being way more of a father figure than Ozai ever was. Throughout the series, we see various people traveling to and from the spirit world, so why hasn't Iroh ever traveled to see Zuko? As it seems like Zuko wasn't even aware it was possible to see his uncle before Korra mentioned it. This is where we have to get into the technicalities of being a spirit. You see, for a character to travel to the spirit world, they either have to meditate or go through a spirit portal. Before the reopening, opening of the northern and southern spirit portals in The Legend of Korra, travel between the physical and spirit worlds was very rare. It was extremely difficult for any human other than the Avatar who was the bridge between the two worlds, and even then, they could only cross over their spirit. Only a handful of spirits at the time were capable of assuming physical forms in the mortal world, and doing so required them to give up their immortality. This is shown with the moon and ocean spirits who turned into fish and stayed in the spirit oasis in the northern water. Water tribe. However, it seems like spirits, who don't always have to have originated from the spirit world, can do physical damage without assuming mortal forms. This is where the blurry line exists between how a spirit acts in the mortal world, between the Legend of Korra and the Last Airbender. A character in a similar position would be the Painted Lady. The Painted Lady was a human with a close relationship to nature and a connection to the spirits. Due to her spirituality, she transcended into the spirit world following her death, becoming the benevolent spirit of the Zhanghui River. Even though she was a human who transcended and became a spirit, she was still able to return to the town to help out, be that in a ghostly form. However, she was affected by mortal matters. When a Fire Nation factory began polluting the lake, it made the spirit flee the area and the villagers to fend for themselves. Lasting feelings, hauntings, and whether a spirit is a creature or a sentient godlike being all seems to be things that affect the spirit's abilities. For example, the forest spirit Heibai was a panda spirit who transformed and retaliated when the Fire Nation destroyed his home, kidnapping people and doing serious damage to village buildings. Whenever the spirit was about, he only traveled from the spirit world at night and was affected by things in the physical plane, like having Sokka's boomerang bounce right off it as if it was there. However, in The Legend of Korra, the laws of spirits appearing in the spirit world seem to change, especially after the portals open. So the actual abilities of spirits surrounding the physical plane do seem to vary. However, it wouldn't be far-fetched to assume that once the spirit portals opened, Zuko and other members of the cast could see Iroh again at his tea shop. But before then, it may have been really difficult to do so without there being some sort of tie to a very spiritual location. 
location. And that doesn't even account for the fact that maybe Iroh wanted to leave Zuko so he could grow. Iroh wouldn't have wanted Zuko to tow around the past forever, and passing on so Zuko couldn't rely on him could have been a way to let Zuko grow into the fully realized leader that he became. It definitely seems like Zuko would be interested in seeing his uncle again, though. I know I would even appreciate a small comic showing off the interactions between the two. I mean, I know I would cry, but come on! We all need some Iroh feels sometimes, even if it's to feel sad. Man, even remembering little soldier boy is just heartbreaking, man. But even though Iroh probably would have loved to see Zuko again, it would have still been very difficult to do so before the portals opened. And that is Iroh's life in the spirit world. We all need a little bit of Iroh in our lives from time to time. What do you guys think? Are there any other shenanigans Iroh could have got up to in the spirit world? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more Avatar content. Thanks so much, guys, and we'll see you next time.